Hello everyone and welcome to history episode 24, 24, 23, 24, not quite sure. It's been a while since I did an episode um, because I have been a busy little bee. Uh, history went to Florence. Uh, it was a present from my mum for my 30th birthday um, to go to my ancestral homeland of Italy, my maternal grandmother um, was Italian and it's somewhere that I've always wanted to go and something that I've always wanted to do so I've got three episodes coming out one on uh, Catherine de Medici one on Contessina Bardi and one on Clarice Orsini um, Florence's greatest export Florence's greatest import and um, just the like the founder of kind of the Medici dynasty female wise if you like so a lot going on um in that respect and they're going to be the first videos that I'm going to be sort of editing because at the moment I just sit down and record them but I'm going to be interspersing pictures from my journey and videos from from my time in Florence so um, I'm working really hard on those and I hope you really enjoy them but to keep you going while we wait I'm going to be doing an episode on Typhoid Mary. I've also got another new little segment series thing which will be coming out, which is called A Historian Reacts. Um, so when I was on the plane on the way to Florence and um, in what very little downtime I had in Florence, I was watching Catherine the Great, the new HBO series. And I thought, wouldn't it be cool, seeing as I've done an episode on Catherine the Great, to share... A historian's opinion on the show and other similar shows so I'll be doing lots of research I'll be watching things like Gentleman Jack which I haven't got around to doing yet Naughty Me um, and I'll be watching Mulan when it comes out and stuff like that and then I will be doing another segment called A Historian Reacts so if there's anything you would like me to look at and cast a critical eye over please let me know in the comments below and I will get on to watching that so anyhow here's a little tidbit to keep you going while we wait for uh, me to get my butt together and oh the sun's just come out the sun will come out the sun is still shining in December that's crazy no i mean i'm grateful for it but there's some craziness going on here it was mad when we were in florence it was like 17 19 degrees celsius crazy wonderful weather loving it um anyway typhoid mary harbinger of death and disease and she didn't even know it bless her so mary mallon was born on september 23rd 1869 in cookstown county tyrone northern ireland she migrated to the United States as a teenager at the age of 14 slash 15. <laughs> That's not helping. Not helping in the slightest. Oh, well, you'll just have to have my, uh, my beautiful, uh, lightened face like a Botticelli painting. <laughs> Moved to the States as a teenager at the age of 14, 15 in 1883 84 to live with her aunt and uncle for a time before later finding work as a cook for affluent families between the years of 1900 and 1907. In 1900, she moved to, I can never say this, Mamaroneck, Mamaroneck New York, um, where within two weeks of her employment, residents developed typhoid fever. In 1901, she moved to Manhattan, where members of the family who employed her developed fevers and diarrhoea, um, from which their laundress died from. She then went on to work for a lawyer, where seven of the eight members of that household became ill. And in 1906, Mary took a position in Oyster Bay in Long Island, and within two weeks, 10 of the 11 family members were hospitalised with typhoid. Similar occurrences happened in the next three households she was employed in, and then later on in 1906, Mary worked for wealthy New York banker Charles Henry Warren at their rented house in Oyster Bay, where six of the 11 people in the family contracted typhoid fever, and outbreaks just followed her wherever she went. 
In late 1906, the Thompson family, who owned the house the Warrens rented, hired a typhoid researcher named George Soper to investigate. Imagine that being your job. Oh, I'm a typhoid researcher. He published his results in the Journal of the American Medical Association on June the 15th, 1907, stating his belief that Mary was the common factor and the source of the outbreak. He was unable to locate her because she left after each out outbreak began, leaving no forwarding address. When Soper learned of an active outbreak in an apartment on Manhattan's Park Avenue, he wasn't at all surprised to discover Mary was their cook. Two of the servants were hospitalised and the daughter had died of typhoid. The thing you have to understand about this period is typhoid is a disease that affects the poor. It is a disease that affects people that do not have access to sanitised water and who are unable to um, cook their food properly. So rich people getting typhoid is an uncommon phenomenon and this is why it piques people's attentions. People are dying from typhoid all over but not rich people and that's that's the thing that makes this stand out. So yes, two of the servants are hospitalised and the daughter died of typhoid. When Soper finally approached Mary, she refused to, to submit urine, blood and stool samples. Um, she actually threatened him with a carving fork and told him to get out. <laughs> um, so he instead compiled a five-year history of her employment, which showed that out of eight families that had hired her as a cook, Members of seven of those families had contracted typhoid fever and 22 had shown signs of infection. That's crazy. When Soper took his findings to Mary um, with a doctor present, she locked herself in the bathroom and refused to come out until they left. The New York City Health Department were informed of it and sent physician Sarah Josephine Baker to talk to Mary, who was nothing but defensive. So a few days later, Baker and several police officers took Mary into custody. Mary caught the media's attention, who dubbed her Typhoid Mary. Now, you have to understand this from Mary's perspective. She has never had typhoid fever. So they are basically accusing her of using um, dirty water, unclean food, not washing her utensils properly, all that sort of thing. Um, so the... The way she sees it is they're accusing her of being unsanitary and trying to ruin her professional reputation, but she's never had typhoid fever herself. This is the first kind of public instance we see where someone is a carrier and hasn't actually contracted the illness and is passing it on to other people. So from Mary's point of view, she's utterly blameless in all of this. And this is slander and this is defamation of character. Um... So I'm not surprised she was very upset by this. Um, so she's arrested. She's forced to give a urine and a stool sample. And the New York City Health Inspector determined she was a carrier under sections 1169 and 1170 of the Greater New York Charter. Mary was held in isolation for three years at a clinic located at North Brother Island. If I'm right in thinking North Brother Island used to be... Um, place where people with tuberculosis were confined and stuff like that so it's got a history of um confinement ah the sun's out again came right in my eyeball so mary adamantly denied she was a carrier however on february the 19th 1910 under this decision by eugene h porter the new york state commissioner of health she signed an affidavit and agreed to stop working as a cook to wash her hands regularly and take reasonable steps to prevent transmitting typhoid to others in exchange for her freedom from isolation. She was released from quarantine and returned to the mainland where she was given a job as a laundress. However, this paid much, much less than cooking. So after a few years, Mary changed her name to Mary Brown and went back to her former occupation. Now bear in mind, under her conditions of freedom, Freeman? Freedom. She was supposed to check in with them every three months. So Mary goes AWOL. She changes her name, she goes off the radar, and she goes back to working as a cook. 
Um, for the next five years, she worked in a number of kitchens, spreading typhoid fever wherever she went and changing jobs so frequently that the authorities couldn't catch up with her. In 1915, Mary started a major outbreak at Sloan Maternity Hospital for Women in New York City. 25 people were infected and two died. She legged it as quickly as possible, but the police were able to find and arrest her this time. She was returned to quarantine on North Brother Island on March 27th, 1915. Still protesting, there was absolutely nothing wrong with her. Mary remained in confinement for the rest of her life, which was 23, another 23 years. She became a minor celebrity and was occasionally interviewed by the media, who were told not to touch or even accept a glass of water from her. Six years before her death, on Christmas Day, 1932, Mary was paralysed by a stroke, died, finally dying of pneumonia at age 69 on November the 11th, 1938. A post-mortem found evidence of live typhoid bacteria in her gallbladder. Mary's body was cremated and her ashes buried at St Raymond's Cemetery in the Bronx. Only nine people attended her funeral. No one witnessed her burial and no family members claimed her body. Which is very sad. Um, very, very sad indeed. So, fun facts. Maybe not so much, maybe not so fun facts this time. Facts about Typhoid Mary. So firstly, I thought I should address what is typhoid fever exactly? It's caused by the Salmonella typhi bacteria and it's passed through food or water that has been contaminated. Symptoms include fever, fatigue, muscle aches, diarrhea, vomiting, delirium, hallucinations, rashes, and in some cases, intestinal bleeding and death. It had about a 10% fatality rate and a vaccine wasn't created until 1911, five years after the Warren family come down sick and the investigation is launched. It was an illness, as I said before, associated with the poor, um, overcrowded town cities, tenements, slums and badly sanitised households. Certainly not for well-to-do middle class families or those with money. So Mary's reaction and denial, it may seem extreme, like threatening someone with a carving knife when they all they want is a blood and urine sample. Um, but we have to remember Mary had never been sick. Um, Irish immigrants, particularly Catholics, were reviled by the Americans. Their homes and churches were burned, mob violence was common, and blaming something on an Irish person was a rather normal thing to do, to be scapegoated in that way. Signs of no Irish need apply adorned windows on every street corner. Irish persecution would have been keenly felt all the time by Mary, um, because she retained her accent all of her life. Mary's initial arrest came after a five hour chase where she was eventually bundled into the back of an ambulance where um, Baker had to sit on her for the entire ride because she was struggling so hard, spitting, fighting and swearing like an angry lion. I like her, she's gone. <laughs> Not for spreading typhoid and killing people but I like her her zeal and her um determination many doctors suggested and begged for Mary to have her gallbladder removed whilst in captivity as that's where the bacteria lived but she never acquiesced until the day she died when they took it out and looked at it and found live uh typhus bacteria in there so Mary is the first ever example of a completely asymptomatic character uh, carrier that has ever been studied she was never given any kind of real advice on how to sanitize her hands properly or um, what the disease exactly was and how it was spread um, she was slandered as a criminal yet she'd not deliberately inflicted violence upon anybody she felt like a scapegoat for an outbreak in 1907 which affected over 3,000 people in New York um, that had absolutely nothing to do with her. And by the second time she was arrested, she'd lost all her fight and her anger and agreed that despite her good intentions, typhoid did seem to follow her wherever she went. But she felt kind of 
vilified and like a freak show and a lab rat and um you know people did not really understand at this time so it must have been an awful experience for her by the time she died more than 400 other carriers had been identified in new york city alone um though mary was the only one who had been forcibly quarantined mary in her later years found peace in religion and eventually learned to live with her confinement um, so typhoid still impacts around 60 million people across the globe today which is pretty crazy seeing as there's a vaccine and it's treatable with antibiotics at least three deaths were attributed to mary directly and 51 infections but due to her frequent name changes the exact number is unknown some estimate she may have caused up to 50 fatalities she was thought responsible for the infection of at least 122 people when all the names, various name changes have been taken into account. Today, typhoid Mary is a colloquial term for someone who unknowingly spreads a disease. Actress Elizabeth Moss is reportedly developing a TV series in which Mary is a central character based on the 2013 novel Fever by, ba by Mary by Mary Beth Keane. My goodness, that was a mouthful. So Mary wasn't even the most lethal carrier of the bacteria in New York City's history. In 1902, Tony Labella reportedly caused two outbreaks that combined for more than 100 cases and five deaths, yet he was not forcibly quarantined. In Mary's words, I've never had typhoid in my life and have always been healthy. So why should I be banished like a leper? I compelled to live in solitary confinement with only a dog for company, a little fox terrier, who she loved very dearly. So there we go. That is the story of Typhoid Mary. What do you think? I think it's a very sad story. Um, I think Mary, in hindsight, yes, she probably should have submitted for the tests um, that were being asked of her, and that was why she was probably forcibly quarantined but you have to you do have to look at it in the context of an irish woman trying to make a living and just trying to get by in new york society where irish immigrants are not tolerated and are scapegoated for many many things so i can understand her defensive attitude and i can understand her unwillingness to cooperate um but what do you think? I mean, there's no, there's no denying the damage she caused, the infection she caused, the death she caused. And once she'd been released from confinement the first time, yes, she wasn't taught how to properly wash her hands and, and properly cook food. And she didn't have a proper understanding of how typhoid was spread. But she did knowingly go back to working as a cook and changed her name and was essentially on the run for a long time floating from house to house so in some ways she knew what she was doing but she continued to do so because she wasn't earning enough money as a laundress i don't think mary mallon is a a victim i don't think mary mallon is a villain um i think she's a complex character somewhere between the two and i would be very interested to hear your thoughts so there you go just a little quick one on mary mallon aka typhoid mary and um, i promise you i am working very hard on editing the clips from florence for the three upcoming episodes and there will be the first episode of historian reacts about catherine the great coming very very shortly i'm full of i don't know some kind of lurgy at the moment so i'm I'm sleeping a lot. I'm still in my, my Wonder Woman pajamas. Um, I'm sleeping a lot and I'm feeling a bit naff. And I've also got a dissertation proposal due in just after Christmas. So there is a lot going on. But I want to get this Catherine the Great thing done. And I want to get these Florence videos done. And see how you all take a historian reacts hopefully you love it and um let me know what you would like me to review in the comment section below and i will see you very soon for florence episodes and a historian reacts take care lots of love and um hopefully we'll have an episode before christmas but if not 
have a wonderful Christmas, Hanukkah, whatever, whatever you're celebrating, happy holidays, season's greetings, have an amazing time, and um, we will definitely see each other before the new year. Um, so yeah, Typhoid Mary, everyone, let me know what you think. Take care. Bye.